Welcome to the third episode of The Nest. I'm Van Lee Bohr, and we've got some stories we're super excited for you guys to see. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. Seventy-four percent of people each year experience an overwhelming amount of stress. With this amount of stress they're feeling, they aren't able to properly cope. Stress is a state of mental or emotional strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. I will be taking a deep dive into stress to see how it affects others. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are um, you? Good, good. Um, what's your name and what do you do? Okay. My name is Debbie Calton. I uh, am a psychologist and I administer neuropsychological evaluation. All right. How do people feel when they experience stress? Like what happens in the brain? 
Here's the thing about stress. After that stressful situation sort of, sort of uh, calms down and you're not experiencing that anymore, um, the brain also exhibits this hormone called cortisol. Cortisol in your brain is what's responsible for bringing you back to that normal, calm state that you were in the, to, before all this happened. The thing is that sometimes people experience stress that doesn't go away, um, whether it is stress from a family situation or an illness that they have. Anyway, the stress is prolonged, and so there's no way that cortisol can take care of all that. And when that happens, cortisol keeps building up and building up, and it can't fix it, and so then, your body releases like a hormone that's on steroids. It's called glutocorticoids, if, if that matters to you, it really doesn't. But it's just stronger hormones that stay in your system longer than the cortisol could. And if they stay in your body long enough, that's when they start to cause things like gum. Uh, it, it makes your, they make your brain a little bit more inefficient. And in some cases, your brain even shrinks until, you know, all of this is taken care of and then it rebuilds its pathways. But at any rate, when, you're, when your body feels these stronger hormones, um, that's when you start to feel depressed or anxious, you can't focus, you might feel physically ill. All of those things are stress-related when it has come from this particular issue. All right, um, how can people manage it? How can people manage stress? Well, to be proactive, since we know that stress happens to everybody, uh, what you can do are things that you already know that you're supposed to be doing, like uh, you need to be eating properly, you need to, and seriously properly, you need to be getting enough outside activity, moving around. Um, you need to practice, if you don't, some deep breathing, like just to kind of release the stress. That helps some people. Um, you need to get enough sleep. And I would think that a lot of teenagers and people in your school maybe don't get enough sleep. But all of these kinds of things, and, and doing the things you enjoy, making more time for the things you enjoy doing, rather than saying, I've got to go do this other thing, I've got to go do this other thing. Make time for yourself and for that. All right, well, thank you. That's all. Um, thank you for showing up. Um, have a good day. Thank you for having me. You have a great day, too. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. With this in mind, I will be interviewing students here at Hainsbridge Middle School to see how they feel about stress. Can you um, please say your name and grade? Uh, I'm Samantha Dickerson, and I'm in sixth grade. I'm Raina. I'm in the seventh grade. My name is Thomas Norn. I'm in eighth grade. Um, what stresses you out? Grades, ELA, subject, any subject. Probably balancing sports like cheer and homework. Um, a lot of things. You know, I'm in school, so um, like grades and my, like my grades and um, uh, upcoming uh, upcoming assignments and assignments that uh, were upcoming weeks ago. Um, and I'm also in scouting, and so uh, working towards merit badges and ranks, while well, fun, it is also pretty stressful. And how do you all manage this? Um, I definitely just put myself in like the can-do attitude. Rather than thinking, I can't get all this work done, I more think, if I do it in a certain order, I can do this. Um, I usually just take it one step at a time, like break it down, like do work and then take a break, and then I usually get it done. I manage it by uh, talking to my friends, saying, hearing their experiences, and then also um, playing some relaxing video games like uh, Farming Simulators, like Stardew Valley, or other games like Unpacking Simulator, stuff like those. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Overall, stress can be very stressful. Uh, I'm bad at jokes. But in all seriousness, if you ever do feel stressed, I advise you to take one of the tips that has been used in this video. Thank you. Lene Dickstein. I am the band director at Hainsbridge Middle School. Sixth graders should do band because it is something where they learn how to work as a team. They learn how to play music on a brass woodwind or percussion instrument. It is a ton of fun. If your student is looking for 
a smooth transition into middle school, band is one of the best things to do for that. They're learning all kinds of new skills. They get to learn music and it's a really fun time. band is probably definitely the performances. I enjoy performing in front of people and I think it's just really it's a really fun experience. Join band! Join band. Join band. Join band. Join band. Mr. Deitchman, you're failing, Jake. You got a 32 on your assignment. Hey, bro, I don't even care, bro. It's whatever. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go for a little daily drive. Notification. Hold on. Mr. Deitchman, again, Jake, you failed another assessment. Keep this up and you won't be able to graduate. Oh, maybe I should uh, go back and study instead of drive. Gotta lock in. Let's see if this thing still works. Here we go. Oh, all caught up in my assignments now to see what I get tomorrow. Great job. Mmm.
thank you for watching this episode of The Nest. I hope you catch us next time. Until then, see you.